Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. It's our joy, it's our delight to be able to come your way and spend time with you. And we appreciate you tuning in and, and uh, making the time uh, to be with us and uh, receive the Word of God and spend some time in prayer together as well. Uh, we encourage you to share uh, what you learn with others, encourage others to tune in and uh, be a part of what uh, we are studying from the Word of God. Uh, we have been picking out a few psalms uh, over the last few weeks uh, and just uh, uh, spending uh, some time uh, in, in psalms and uh, learning a few things from each of those psalms, drawing insights and uh, practical application. I want to pick uh, a psalm that is very well known, again, a psalm that is very commonly used, especially uh, when it comes to divine protection. And that is Psalm 91, which of course is a psalm of protection. And you know, many times uh, when uh, people are about to travel, maybe they're about to go on a road journey, or they're going to go on a you know, long flight, uh, or, or embark on something that could have danger associated with it. Uh, you know, many of us believers, as, uh, and even as families, we open up, turn our Bible to Psalm 91 and read through that psalm. I think that's great. That's, that there's a lot of encouragement uh, when it comes to areas of uh, divine protection there and gives us a lot of confidence and assurance um, that God is our protector. And so I want to just go back and, and read this psalm through for us and then spend a few moments drawing uh, some insights here from Psalm 91. So let's read through Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, 
nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So the psalm is packed with promises of divine protection of God being our protector, pr protecting us from all kinds of perils that could take place uh, in broad daylight or it in the night seasons. God protecting us. It's talking also gives us divine protection because of angels are uh, standing God around us. It then talks not only of divine protection, but talks about uh, divine authority for the, uh, for the person who trusts in God and him being able to trample underfoot the uh, the serpent and, and the young lion and so on. And he, then it also talks about divine intervention, God intervening in the life of such a person. But what is the posture of the person who experiences this kind of divine protection, this kind of authority, and this kind of deliverance that God has promised? So God says he will do uh, in, in, in this psalm. Who is the person who experiences this? And what is the cause for him to experience such kind of protection, such kind of uh, authority, and such kind of uh, deliverance in his life? What is the cause for it? You find in Psalm 91 a threefold posture of such a person. The first one, very important, you find that in verses 1, 9, and 14, that this person has relationship. And it's not just a casual relationship, relationship with the Most High God. He is connected with the Most High. And it's not a casual relationship, but it's a place of intimate relationship, a dwelling, a residing kind of relationship. Meaning, I'm not a, he's not a visitor, he or she, and I'm using that word in a, in a neutral way, that this person is not a visitor with God visiting you know, occasionally or once a week or once a month. But this person is dwelling with God. He's in this place of intimate relationship with God. And here's how the psalm brings it out. In verse 1, he says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. So here is the Most High God, the El Elyon, the Most High. And here is a man or a woman, a person who's dwelling there in the secret place. Now, what is the secret place? As you look through the psalms, you find uh, that, that same term, the secret place, uh, used in other uh, psalms. Uh, for instance, in Psalm 27 and verse 5, it, it says, He will hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle. In Psalm 31 and verse 20, it talks about the secret place of your presence. Now, the Lord Jesus himself used the term secret place. And he was talking about a man who would go into his closet and he would pray to the Father in the secret place. So here the secret place, referring to that place alone with God, your closet, your time alone with God. And again in verse 18, the Lord Jesus uses that same uh, term, the secret place, as being in fasting before God. So essentially, what is the secret place? It's your place of dwelling in God's presence. It's your place of intimacy with God. And so the psalm says, the person who dwells in this place, in the presence of God, this person who's dwelling in that place of intimacy with God, he who dwells, he who resides, 
he who continues in the secret place of the Most High. He is the person, he or she is a person, who is going to experience this kind of protection. It says he will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So God is casting his shadow. So here is the Most High and he casts his shadow over this person, meaning he is under the protection of the Most High God. He is in a place of immunity. He is in a place where he's shadowed by God. Nothing can touch him. No harm can come to, against him. No evil will befall him because he, is cho he has chosen to dwell in that place of intimate relationship with God, uh, uh, in the place of intimacy. Again, verse 9 says, Because you've made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place. Again, and then in verse 14, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. So what kind of a person would experience such protection, such authority, such deliverance? These three verses reveal to us the kind of person who experiences it. It's really a person who set his love upon God. And because of that love, he is dwelling in close communion. He is dwelling in a place of intimacy. He is abiding with God. Practically, uh, it means two things. See, there is what we can do in our posture, and there is what we can do in practice. Now, in our posture, that means in how we are posturing ourselves before God. We are continually communing with God. Our delight is in God. We have set our love upon Him. So we never leave His presence. Now, in practice, we may be going about our job. You know, you can't lock yourself in your room throughout the day, every day of the week, because you and I, we've got responsibilities on earth. We've got to go to work. We've got uh, things to do. Uh, and so it's not like we can always say cloistered in the closet. Can't do that. But no matter what we are doing, uh, whether you go to work, you go to an office, you go to a school, you go to a college, whatever your place of work is, in your heart, you're still dwelling with God. You have set your love upon God and you are communing with God. So you are still in your secret place. You have not left the secret place of His presence. So that is your posture before God. You are in communion with Him. You are in, 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 in your love is set upon Him and you're dwelling in the secret of His presence. And to such a person, God says, you are in that place of immunity. Nothing can touch you. The second thing we see about such a person is about his declaration. He, in verse 2, this person says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him. I will trust. So that's the second thing we see about such a person who experiences divine protection. He's, he, what he says about God, he has a bold declaration of who the Most High God is to him. You don't hear him speaking things like, God, God may forsake me. God may not help me. God has abandoned me. That's not how he speaks. It says then verse 2, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my fortress, my God in Him I trust. Meaning God is my place of security, God is my place of defense, like a fortress surrounding me, protecting me. So here's the man affirming, here's the man declaring, God is my protector. So that's very important. So not only does he dwell in that place of intimacy or have that relationship with God, he also has a declaration that he makes. His declaration is that God is his place of refuge. God is his protector. The third thing we see about this person who experiences this kind of protection and authority and deliverance is this. He walks with boldness. So the first, there is relationship. Second, there is declaration. Third, there is boldness. He has a confidence in God that eliminates fear from his life. He is so intimate in his relationship with God that he can boldly say about God, God is my protector. And not only can he make that declaration, but he has no fear because of the assurance, the confidence he has in God. Verse 5, it says, You will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. 
There is no fear in this person. He has no fear of harm either in the daytime or in the night. There is no fear of any terror by night or by any arrow that flies by day. He says, look, I am fearless. Why? Because I have a relationship with God. I can make my declaration. Therefore, I can make my declaration of who God is to me. And I can walk without fear, day or night. I'm not afraid of anything that can come against me. Isaiah 54 and verse 14. In righteousness you will be established. You will be far from oppression. For you will not fear. And from terror, for it will not come near you. So this person is, knows that he is in that place under God's shadow. God is his fortress. God is his place of refuge. And he is so confident in that that he is absolutely fearless. He is not afraid of any terror, any form of oppression, any arrow that might fly by day or any terror that might come by night. So the rest of the psalm then begins to tell us about the protection, the immunity, the deliverance uh, that such a person experiences. And I'm just going to highlight some of these things. I'm not looking at every verse that describes the protection, that describes the immunity uh, and the authority and the deliverance that this person has. And, and, and we can study that through. But really, when a person lives like this, he has a relationship with God. He has his declaration of who God is to him. And he is fearless and he's bold because of his confidence in God. What happens? It tells us it's like God being the mother hen. God covering him with his feathers. And he is resting and he is taking refuge under the wings of God. That's verse 4. I, he, he will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you're taking refuge. God covers you. You are covered. So even if you see calamity all around you, verse 7, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand. You know that you're in a place of immunity. It is not going to hurt you. You are not going to be another count in the statistic of how many people are falling around you because you are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. And you know, according to verse 7, it will not come near you. Why? Because God shadows you, because you, His wings cover you, because He is your fortress, He is your refuge. So you're not alarmed, you're not afraid by all that, sees, uh, that you see around you. Verse 8. You will see all this around you, but you know that God has you covered to the point where it says in verse 10, no evil will befall you, no plague, no disease, no sickness, no infirmity will come near your house, near your dwelling. And then he tells us in verse 11 that there are angels, God's angels who are authorized to take care of you. His angels are on assignment over your life because you have made him your dwelling place, you have declared him to be a fortress and your place of refuge, and you are fearless because of your confidence in God. You've got angels guarding you. They will protect you. And now you begin to walk in that place of authority. Verse 13, you are treading over the lion, the cobra. You're treading over all form of evil. You know, uh, for us in the New Testament, we understand that the devil goes about like a roaring lion. We understand that the devil is also referred to as the old serpent. Jesus told us we will trample over serpents and scorpions. So we understand that figure of speech. That verse 13 is talking to us about authority over demonic powers and demonic forces. And so our dwelling in the most high, in the secret place, now puts us in a place not only of immunity, but in a place of authority. And the psalm also promises divine intervention, divine deliverance in time of trouble. So does it mean trouble won't come? Even when trouble comes, he says, God says, I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him. I will set him on high. I will honor him. Meaning I'm going to lift him up above that trouble. I'm going to keep him in a place right there with me over and above all the storms and the waves. And I'm going to cause honor upon his life even in the midst of trouble. Imagine that. What a blessing. And the psalm concludes by the promise of longevity. It says that God will satisfy him with a long life and will show him his salvation. There is the promise 
of longevity for such a person. What a powerful psalm here in Psalm 91. Uh, and, and just three requirements here that Psalm 91 gives to us for us to experience the richness of God's protection, God's angels guarding us, giving us authority, and God divinely delivering us and the promise of longevity. Three simple things that this man does. He dwells in God's presence. He declares who God is. And he is fearless and bold as he walks about his life. I want to encourage you. Let Psalm 91 become a part of your life, part of my life, the way we live, that we choose to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, to dwell in that place of intimacy and in the presence of God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that this is your promise for us, that if we choose to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, if we choose to walk in that place of communion with you and in intimacy with you, all of this becomes ours. And I pray in the name of Jesus that each one of us, God, will walk this way so we can experience your protection, your divine deliverance, your blessing of longevity, authority that flows from you through our lives, and angels always delivering us. Let that be our portion, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way.